Hi, this is Brad. Just doing a quick uh, Lab Wizard walkthrough. Um, Lab Wizard is a chemical plating line bath management software which will give you precise uh, triggering events for technicians to analyze the chemicals in your production process. So uh, the first part of this demo will be just kind of going over the basic screens in Lab Wizard and what it offers. There'll be other demonstrations with more detail. Every technician that uses the software will need to log in. Uh, that way there's accountability and um, you're able to see you know, exactly which technicians are doing what kind of work. So in this case we'll just put in a name. Uh, just put in Ron. And right now there's the electrolysis process, automated plating process, brown oxide, desmer, manual plating, nickel gold line, pumice pre-clean, SES line, hot air level, and there is with each process a set of stations that can be set up. So all these came from one um, factory uh, doing doing work and um, you can customize any of these parameters with the processes that you have in your production facility and customize the stations which each tank can be a station and then the component within that station so in this case uh, electrolysis copper process has a, a station called conditioner 3320 and that's the only component there's a station called 748 micro etch and that has four components that can be analyzed sulfuric acid, reposit etch, copper and etch. Here's a cat A prep that has two components, a catalyst that has four components and so on. So every single process uh, can be customized and set up exactly how you want it with the chemicals that you want analyzed. Let's go into the setup area of the program. We'll click on the setup menu and process setup. So here we see the process setup screen. Uh, there's a few options that we have when doing this. We have add a process, modify an existing process, or delete a process. Under the, proce <coughs> under the process window here you can click on the process you want to edit or look at. Um, and under each process you can add a station, modify a station, or delete a station. And then under each station, as you would suspect, there's the option to add a component, modify attributes of a component, or delete a component. In the process setup area, you can enter different units for measuring the product. Uh, in this case it's square feet. and there's actually a schedule of times where you can uh, say a process is starting every day and right here is where you set Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. These are basically your shifts and the start times and stop times of your plating line. So uh, it's very nice for calculating your analysis events to have this kind of work week um, schedule that uh, you know for sure that the same number of hours have elapsed between each analysis period versus having your analysis just on Tuesdays and Thursdays or Tuesdays and Fridays that will always uh, create a different gap between processes. In the station area you can enter in a station name or number the station size and then the units of size in this case it's a hundred gallons and you can actually automate an add printout so after the analysis um, it automatically prints out that way if the analysis is, um, is out of spec and the technician may be tempted to uh, to fudge some of the results um, they won't have a chance to because it'll just print the minute they enter in the, uh, the analysis and you have the option to analyze the station after 
the makeup. So just to make sure that your technician is making up the chemical bath correctly, you can trigger another analysis. You can trigger the station makeup by two methods. One is by product going through the process and you can see that here. You can schedule a, make a makeup bath based on time, product, or both or none. And then here you enter in <coughs> how much product runs through the process before you do a makeup. There's also different uh, add instructions and makeup instruction options here and we can go through those later. The, another s the next section to talk about is the component section and uh, also for a component, in this case it's DI water, um, sulfuric acid. So here we, we're triggering a sul sulfuric acid based on time and that's every 80 hours of production time. Again, that's where you set up your, your production schedule with the with the weekly um, with the days in the week and the t start times for your process so that 80 hours will just be strict production time that your process is actually running product uh, you have the option here to analyze after the ad just to double check that you've done the ad or that the technicians done the ad correctly um, if the analysis was out of spec and uh, you want to have the technician analyze again you check this box and then the trigger make up based on the set point or rather based on the ad so um, you can actually trigger a makeup if you really wanted to there's also uh, a field for the the um, unit for describing the path concentration so in this case it's percentage and then for add you can choose your unit in this case it's liters and then for makeup you can choose a different unit in this case it's gallons this is kinda nice because some lab labs um, operate with uh, metric and standard SI units and um, gives you a little flexibility that you might need the unit for analysis field is here and in this case it's, it's milliliters and or mils and the threshold at precision and make up precision. So in this case, we want to modify those. Um, you can choose the precision that you want the technician to do his or her measurements to, and um, the at precision and the make up precision. There's also uh, SPC type of uh, spec limits here. And there's also an area here where you can put custom instructions in where the technician will only see them if a certain uh, value is or threshold is, is uh, reached. So you set the threshold here and you can say less than or greater than. So you might have some kind of situations where you need that flexibility. This area here is where you can have the control chart displayed after every ad so the technician can see what's going on and uh, after every analysis you can also show the, the control chart with this field right here you can manually define control chart parameters here's the upper control limit lower control limit and when you click on this box it enables these fields so you can actually set your uh, control chart parameters you can also include an SPP, uh, CPK process capability report by clicking on this box and then you here you have your SPC rules there's several rules that we can go into at a, a later time that would trigger uh, uh, out of spec condition alright the next thing we're going to touch on is the template that can be accessed for making uh, customizing your reports and your ad slips the way you want them so you click on this printing tab here and let's look at an ad template so in this case um, we have a tracking number field where there's a there's a sequential number that's issued with every ad trans um, ad event so that shows up on the upper right hand the date the time the process the station station number safety equipment to wear and 
here you have this comment that you type in and then there's an add information and um, below that you have issued by the technician's name who happens to be logged in in this case it was Ron and the technician in this case would put their initials right here and here's the date and time and it says to pre please return this slip to the lab so you have lots of options and flexibility here on how you set up your ad slips and it's great because uh, each, each situation may be a little bit different so um, that's how that works it's nice that, uh, to look at the help screen if you want to see what all these fields are that you can use with the uh, triple brackets around them and you can actually look at the report preview right here and it just shows you what it will look like when it prints you can do a test print also. Another nice feature is the makeup template and again you have fields with triple brackets around them that you can use and place wherever you want to. Um, in this makeup template um, it shows again similar fields, date, time, process, station, <coughs> safety equipment, carefully uh, remake a new solution using this specified below. So this is a comment just a custom comment that you can modify, add or delete. And again, you have really good accountability here that the technician is doing exactly what, you know, what you want them to do. So, uh, also there's a help screen again and the uh, print preview. You can click on this button here and get a look at what it looks like when it prints out. So this is the actual printout the technician will uh, get and will initial that they did. Alright, there's another option for email here where you can have different notifications uh, appear when certain things are out of spec. So uh, we'll go over these at a different time. But uh, pretty much this is a, an introduction of, of LabWizard. We'll finish with the um, a quick uh, walkthrough on what happens when, a, when an event is triggered. So we'll go ahead and save and exit here, or just hit cancel, in this case cancel. So right now there's uh, one check mark. A check mark means that there is something due. So when a check mark appears, you'll see a red light turn on right here. And this station has a check mark by it, so we'll click on that. And it's saying right now there's sulfuric acid component that needs to be looked at. So right here we can see uh, preview upcoming events or show current events due. In this case, it's analysis due for sulfuric acid, station 205. When the technician clicks on this line, it pops up. Oh, looking for a user, so we got to go back to the user. All right, so we're going to click on this line here, and then we get the analysis screen. So we're going to input the number of mils, titration and in this case uh, this this component analysis has been set up with a concentration field a delta an add threshold and the amount that you add so um, if we were to put in 0.2 right here then the concentration is showing up as 0.56 the delta is 9.4 so we'd have to put 12 gallons of chemical in for this. So this is a kind of an example of what happens when the technician uh, clicks on a, an event. After the technician does this, uh, it, it summarizes right here uh, what was what was found, and it's saying uh, you have a couple options here. It gives you a, a procedure. You can go to a trend chart, a show formula maintenance add include data and comments so if we click on procedure you can actually have a procedure set up here in this case there wasn't one so it just says there's no procedure yet the other option was trend chart so this is showing a trend chart and uh, here's a formula so it's showing you the raw formula and the maintenance add 
screen you can actually do a maintenance ad if you want so we'll go over these in uh, future videos so after the uh, analysis has been done um, we hit the exit button so after the analysis has been done we hit this exit button and we get back to the screen and now the event has been cleared so um, if we I, I had changed the input so that it wasn't out of spec and if it had been out of spec it, uh, an ad screen would have come up so for instance right here we click on tin prep dip that's due for analysis I'm going to go to here and once again make sure we're logged in and we're going to click on this window we're going to put in let's see here so let's just say we're going to make this out of spec so we're going to we're going to put in 1 mil and uh we'll need 9 gallons we're going to hit okay it's red we hit exit and it automatically issued an ad slip so the uh, the printer now has this this ad slip and um, here's a the printout right here showing that the ad slip so the technician would take this paper perform the ad and then put it into the stack of uh, wherever the management wants them to put the the completed ad ta events so now the software is prompting that the you know ad slip's been issued you hit OK and it's notifying that the concentration was out of spec. This is a, the uh, checkbox that you had seen earlier during the setup of this component. It had prompted for, it had uh, been enabled to allow this to pop up. And we can see that the, uh, the, the trending is actually going down in this situation. And you hit OK. Here's where you get to actually select a reason why it was out of spec. So you have startup analysis too far apart, overdue, tank level too low, too high, concentration high due to previous ad, previous ad not made, possible problem with rectifier, and so on. There's lots of uh, possible reasons for something being out of spec that you can edit and, and have customized for your application. Alright, this is the first part of the LabWiz walkthrough, and stay tuned for more. If you're interested in finding out more, please uh, visit the website, lab-wizard.com. You'll find more resources on the website, uh, contact information, um, and more, more tools. So, have a great day. Thanks. This has been Brad with LabWizard.